Hi, welcome to our Real Time Faith lesson discussion for our early teens class. I'm so glad you can join me again as we study from God's Word. I hope your week has been great. I hope you've been able to get some work done in spite of the lockdown. And yes, we have more cases of coronavirus. And like I've been saying, these things will keep on growing. But there's no need to fear. All these things are happening according to God's good purpose and His will. So let's trust in God. Let's trust in His protection. And let's do what we need to do to keep safe and healthy. Now our lesson this week is on God's truth. And I hope you've been studying your lesson. I hope you've been thinking about it, contemplating on your lesson. And I hope you've also been helping those around you. So you're not just uh, a Christian in word, but also in deed. Now, before we start our lesson, let us pray together. Our gracious, merciful Father, please help us as we study your word. Give us understanding, Lord, and give us wisdom. Please, Lord, take not your Holy Spirit from us and open our eyes and our minds that we might see your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you so much for everything, Father, and we ask you this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, our lesson is on God's truth. You've heard of gravity, right? Who discovered gravity? Or rather, I should say, who recognized gravity and penned it down for all of us to understand and know that it is something that exists? If you said Isaac Newton, you are right. Legend has it that he noticed an apple falling from a tree and he studied the forces that governed why the apple fell down. And truly, if you look at it, if an apple falls from a tree, it always falls down. It doesn't hang in the air or it doesn't fall up. That's unlikely to happen or it doesn't travel up. An apple, because of the effect of gravity, it always falls to the ground. No matter how you and I think or no matter how much we believe we can fly, if we walk off a cliff, we will fall. There's no way you and I can imagine that we are birds and imagine that we will walk off a cliff and continue walking and succeed in walking. Gravity will pull us down. Not like in the cartoons where you see those cartoon characters zooming off the cliff and they can keep walking for a while until they realize they're off it. And once they realize, then they fall. That doesn't happen in real life. Gravity is a law. And believe it or not, gravity is absolute. You, you can't change it. You can't do anything to make gravity go away or reverse it. Gravity will always be there. And everything around us follows this law of gravity. Now the truth. The truth is something similar to gravity. But it's more than that. The law is an expression of truth. And truth is unchanging. Truth cannot be modified. Truth is absolute. Now, to help us understand truth a bit better, we'll use a story from the Old Testament, the story of the three Hebrew men who stood up against King Nebuchadnezzar. Do you remember this story? Do you know the names of these three Hebrew men? You probably will recall their Babylonian names, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Now, what were their Hebrew names? Their Hebrew names were Hananiah, Azariah, and Mishael. So these three men, when Nebuchadnezzar had a grand dream that he should stay as king forever and ever, his kingdom should never cease to exist. After God had shown him that his kingdom would for a time exist and then go away, another kingdom would replace it. So Nebuchadnezzar had this grand dream that his kingdom would remain and he came up with a plan and put a statue there and made it all of gold. And not just the head, but all the way, chest, thighs, all the way down to the legs, made of gold. And this tall statue was placed in the plains of Jura, in Babylon. And all the people of Babylon came to worship on that day. And the people were told, as soon as you hear the music playing, fall down and worship the golden image. And when the music played, guess what happened? Almost every single person there fell down and worshipped the golden image. 
because they worried about their lives. If they did not worship, they would be thrown into the fiery furnace. But three Hebrew men, they stood up. They did not bow down. They were not the only Hebrews there. There were many other Hebrews, but all those other Hebrews bowed down. These three men, they stood. So these three men were brought before King Nebuchadnezzar. And King Nebuchadnezzar was furious and he asked them, Why didn't you bow down and worship the image that I have set up? Now, the music will play again, but if you don't fall down and worship the image, I will cast you into this burning furnace or this fiery furnace, and which God shall deliver you from my hands. And the three men bravely stood and told King Nebuchadnezzar, Our God is able to save us and deliver us from your hands. But even if he is not going to save us, we will not fall down and worship your golden image. Now that's amazing, isn't it? They expressed what the truth truly is. The truth doesn't depend on our circumstances. Whether we are saved or not, whether we are dying or whether we are living, whether we have the best of health or we are dying from an illness, the truth doesn't depend upon our circumstances. The truth doesn't depend upon where we come from. The truth is unconditional. The truth is absolute. And here the three young men showed what the truth truly is. Now imagine for a moment, you were on your own and you said that we were created by God. And here a billion, one billion people come up to you and they oppose you and they say that we came from apes. Will they suddenly overpower you and win now because they are one billion compared to you, just this one person? The truth is the truth. Regardless of how many people support it, regardless of whatever the circumstances are, the truth is the truth. And that's important to know. Whether you have friends who are forcing you to do something and you are on your own, the truth is the truth. And if we stand for the truth, like the three Hebrew men, then we will be honored by God and God will surely deliver us. And like the three Hebrew men said, whether God delivers us or not, we will still not bow down and worship because we know the truth and the truth is unchanging. The truth is absolute. The truth is uncompromising, unconditional. And it doesn't depend on how many people are on that side and how many people are standing with me. The truth is the truth. Now, having said that, we still need to answer the question, what is the truth? Now, if you look at John 14 verse 6, it gives it as simply as it can be given or explained anywhere in the Bible. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the truth. The truth is a person. It is not a thing or it is not something we read in the Bible and that's the truth. The truth is is a person and this person is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the truth. Now you may also say, but what about our memory verse? John 17 verse 17 says, Sanctify them by thy truth, thy word is truth. So the Bible is the truth, isn't it? Well, what does the Bible speak about? Or what does it talk about? Jesus told the Jews in John 5 verse 39, he said, Search the scriptures the whole of the Old Testament. The scriptures testify of me. The truth testifies of Jesus Christ. The truth is about Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the truth. So another important question we need to ask ourselves, how can we know the truth? Can we know the truth simply by just studying our Bibles, simply by just going to church, simply by watching Christian programs or listening to sermons on the radio. How can we know the truth? Or is it because of our affiliation to a church, because we are part of a certain denomination? Is that how we know the truth? Or because we go to school at some institute where they teach us about it? Can the truth be learned like that? How can we know the truth? Since we've said that the truth is a person, obviously, if we want to know the truth, then it's knowing the person. We need to know Jesus Christ, who is the truth. 
And Jesus himself said to his disciples in John 15 verse 16, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. So Jesus chose his disciples. In other words, Jesus is the one that initiates the relationship with us. He is the one who wants to help us know who he is. It is not us who go running after him to know who he is. He is the one who chooses us. But the thing is, we need to choose him too once he has chosen us. That's what he means by saying, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hears my voice and opens the door, then I will come in and sup with him and he with me. Jesus is keen on having a relationship with us, on us knowing him, knowing the truth. But it's up to us to open the doors of our hearts. It's up to us to let him in and it's up to us to have a meal with him, to have a relationship with him. There was a rich young man who wanted eternal life and he came to Jesus and he asked Jesus, how can I have eternal life? And Jesus told him that really eternal life is having a relationship with him, following him. And that's why he said, go and sell all that you have and come and follow me. Sell all that you have, give it to the poor. Then you take up your cross and follow me. That's how you will get eternal life, by following me, by having a relationship with me. And that's in John 17 verse 3, and this is eternal life that you know the one true God and the one whom he has sent, Jesus Christ. It just basically means having a relationship with him. Not just a surface relationship, but a deep relationship that you really know who this person is. And here Jesus told the rich young man, go and sell all that you have, give it to the poor, and come, take up your cross and follow me. You know how the young man responded. He went away grieved because he had so many possessions and he was sad. He was not willing to lay it aside to have a relationship with Jesus. And many of us are like that rich young ruler. We are not willing to have a relationship with Jesus. We close the doors of our hearts and Jesus just stands there and knocks and knocks and knocks. We are not willing to have a relationship with Jesus. And that's really eternal life, having a relationship with Him. But many of us will not accept it. Many of us will not accept Him. Many of us will not want to have a relationship with Jesus. So Jesus in John 8 verse 31 and 32 puts this relationship with Himself, which gives us eternal life. He puts it in a different way and He says it this way. If you continue in My word, then you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. So if we truly have that relationship and we persist in our relationship with Jesus, we walk with Him no matter what the world is saying, no matter the golden images before us, if we stand up tall and no matter what the opposition in our lives, no matter what the trials that come to us, no matter all these things, no matter the trials, no matter the persecution, if we stand with Him, if we continue with Him, if we walk with Him and we continue in His Word, then we will truly know Him and He will set us free from the sin that weighs us down in this life and He will give us eternal life. Do you know the truth? Well, to help us know the truth, Jesus has given a helper. And He said of the Holy Spirit, And when He comes, He shall lead you into all truth. He will tell you everything about me so that you can have a relationship with me. He will build that relationship between us. So my brothers and sisters, so my young people out there, are you in a relationship with Jesus? Are you in a genuine relationship with Jesus? Are you going to stand for the truth when those trials, those persecutions come? Are you going to hold on to the truth if there are one billion people against you saying something else? Or are you going to hold on to the truth when there are just four or five of your friends there saying, do this or do that? Are you going to stand for the truth? Remember, if we stand for the truth, if we continue in the truth, then we shall surely know the truth and the truth will set us free. The truth is Jesus Christ. Do you know him? Let us pray together. 
Our gracious Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for the truth about your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the truth, who is the way and the life. Please, Father, help us to have a relationship with your Son. And please, Father, help us to walk with him and continue in him, no matter what the circumstances around us are, no matter what the persecutions or the trials are in our lives. Please, Father, help us to cling on to him. We thank you so much for helping us. We thank you so much for choosing us to know the truth. We ask you that you may help us to continue in it. Father, we thank you and praise you for everything. And we ask you this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.